people of God, I need you to understand that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what circumstances you encounter, no matter who releases you or didn't want to be bothered with you, the thing about God's love is that God's love will never let you go. Even when you're trying to get away from God, he'll have you in a grip of grace because God's love is so magnetic, it's so powerful that God is determined to see destiny come to fruition in your life. Bible says, as your nativity on the day you were born, meaning that child, your neighbor cord was not cut, nor were you washed in water, nor were you cleansed, nor were you rubbed with salt, nor were you wrapped in swaddling clothes. What is of note now, we must understand some things about this baby. Watch this. First of all, the baby was unclean. Somebody say unclean. It is here a powerful revelation about our sin nature. And no matter how we dress up, no matter how we put together theological phrases and look holy, there is some uncleanliness in all of us. All of us got some dirt in our lives. As a matter of fact, people of God, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says there is no not one righteous. As a matter of fact, even in verse 23 of Romans 3, the Bible says that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Isaiah 64 and verse 6, the the Bible says we all before God like filthy rags. And even though you may think you have it going on or that you are at a point that you're on this righteous pedestal, you need to understand that everybody up in here got some dirt and some mess in our lives. Minute. Look right there in verse 6. God said, I saw the baby struggling in the blood, in their own blood, struggling, trying to survive. Based on what that child had gone through, that child was about to die. But God walked up and God said, uh-uh, you will not die. You gonna live. And I come to let her declare over your life that no matter who's neglected you and rejected you, who's hurt you, who's left you out to die, I don't care what your situation looks like and what statistics say about you and what sociological data has been written about you I am come to declare today you shall live and not die the thief coming to kill still and destroy but he came that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly I dare you look at somebody and say I command you to live everything you touch shall live you shall live your family shall live your finances shall live everything you put your hand to shall live The Bible declares, there it is, I covered you, but yes, I also swore oath, and I entered in the covenant with you, and you became mine, says the Lord. God said, I claimed you, and nobody else wanted to have anything to do with you. You were an orphan. Your parents had left you out, left you out to die, but God said, I took you in. I adopted you. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul, for reminding us in Ephesians 1 and 5 that God had already predestined that we'd be the adopted ones adopted sons by Jesus Christ to himself and people of God he not only claimed us but he came into covenant with us because a covenant is an agreement and when an agreement suggests that I belong to God I thank God that now he owns me as a result this covenant is binding unlike a contract you can break a contract but you can't break a covenant and covenant brings me benefits because now I got certain benefits that I otherwise would have never had whatever his word says I have a right to hold on to but wait a minute he also cleansed me I told you I was walking dirty and I was riding dirty but guess what he did to me according to verse 9 your Bible said this he washed me with water yes thoroughly washed your blood off and anointed you with oil somebody say God cleansed me Wait a minute, the blood was on the baby representing the victimization of the experience based on the blood. The accumulation of blood points to the victimization and all the pain that the child had gone through. The child had a very difficult birth, was left to die. The navel hadn't been cut. Now the child is covered in all of the afterbirth. I want you to get this. All of the mess of the past and yet what God does, he comes in and says I'm going to clean you up. There's some of you right now, you need to understand that's what Jesus Christ did to us. He cleaned us up. It's not that we didn't have mess on us. And some of us had the afterbirth of our carnality. But thanks be to God, he cleansed us through relationship with Jesus Christ. Some people look at you and they want to know how somebody like you do what you do. How do you have the audacity to walk around like you ain't got no more dirt in your life? You remind them of this. You go on your job tomorrow and just raise the question, what can wash away my sin? 
nativity. Go back to verse 4. According to verse 4, the Bible says that of your nativity, you were born without navel cord that was cut. You were not washed. You were not cleansed. You were not rubbed in salt. And you didn't have any clothes on you. But when God finds you in verse 10, God doesn't give you secondhand clothing. God gives you in broader clothing. Fine linen and fine silk. God hooked you up. God got you looking good. Look at your neighbor and say, you sure look good. And tell them it ain't what's on you. Tell them it's your father's favor on your life. You walking around with your daddy's favor on your life. He got you in fine linen and silk. Oh! And the reason we can affirm this in the text, because the baby had been crowned. Somebody say a crown. According to verse 12, there it is. I'm still in the text. The Bible says he put a beautiful crown on your head. Isn't that amazing? That now that sounds like royalty to me. That sounds like a king's kid to me. That don't sound like no beggar. That don't sound like nobody walking around looking pitiful. That sounds like the head and not the tail. That sounds like above and not beneath. That sounds like a royal a priesthood and a chosen generation change is not enough because I've got to be transformed because change can be temporary I've changed before I have a few days but a few days later I found myself doing the same thing again saying the same thing attracting the same kind of people because what change can be temporary transformation is eternal once a caterpillar transforms into a butterfly he'll never be a caterpillar again priest bishop I'm doing the best I can can. So it is the difference between being healed and being made whole. Because when you were healed of a cold last year, you still got a cold again this year. But the woman with the issue of blood, she wasn't just healed, she was made whole. So which means that when she got sick, she never got sick of that thing ever again. Because see, if being made whole is the ultimate goal of the body, then being transformed is the ultimate goal of the mind. We think life is linear, but wait a minute, life is not linear to be born, to live, and to die, but life is circular. Life is to be born, to live, to die, and to live again. Oh, I'm going to preach this in the house. Yes, it's going to be painful. You're going to experience death, but keep on living because life is about rebirth. It's about reproducing. It's about renewing. That's what God says is going to happen to some of you this year. You're going to be born you're going to live, you're going to die, but you're going to live again. Touch your neighbor, tell them I'm, you're sitting next to a resurrection in process. There's some of you that going through some situations and some areas in your life have died. But God says, get ready because I'm about to resurrect you all over again. I'm going to resurrect your career. I'm going to resurrect your marriage. I'm going to resurrect your ministry everything I was supposed to be. You see, there are two cans that they put on the curb in front of my house. They put a trash can and they put a recycle bin. Now, you gotta be careful because they both look the same. And they'll put the recycle bin out there and the recycle bin will look like trash. It'll be around trash. People will call it trash, but it's a recycle bin and it's been kicked to the curb. And there's some people that look at you because you've been around trash. They say you look like trash and people give up on you. But look at your neighbor and tell them I'm about to be recycled. Tell them and the next time you see me, God would have turned this thing around.